Hello, good evening, everyone. I think we are live. Yes, we are live on Facebook. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Angeline Constantino. I am here with my good friend, Dawn Howell, and I am super excited because we are going to be talking about Dawn's new book called It's a New Dawn. Look at this. One Woman's Journey to Faith and Fulfillment. So I'm super, super excited to have John, who have to have Dawn share her inspirational story on my podcast. So if you are watching this live right now, please let us know where you are tuning in from so we can give you a shout out. And if you are watching the replay, please hashtag replay. So I, like I said, I am super excited and we're broadcasting on a new platform, which is Riverside FM. So please, please let us know in the comments if you can see and hear us. Okay. All right. So a little bit about Dawn. So Dawn Howell is a radiant life and leadership coach with a passion for inspiring others to live their best lives. Born and raised in Northwest Ohio, Dawn has always been drawn to the transformative power of positive thinking, leadership development, and spiritual growth. Her journey has taken her through various paths of self-discovery, healing, and empowerment, each step guided by a deep faith and the desire to help others find their own path to fulfillment. Dawn's approach to coaching is rooted in the belief that everyone has the potential to create a life filled with purpose, joy, and peace. Through her work, she aims to ignite this potential in others, encouraging them to enforce their unique gifts and step boldly into their destiny. It's a New Dawn is Dawn's first published book, a reflection of her own journey and the profound insights she gained along the way for it. She shares her experiences with honesty and vulnerability hoping to inspire readers to see the beauty in their own lives and to recognize the divine guidance that is always present. When she's not coaching or writing, Dawn can be found exploring the natural beauty of Ohio, traveling, spending time with her family and pets or engaging in her community. Her life's work is a testament to her unwavering faith and commitment to living a life of purpose, a message she hopes to share with the world through her writing. And Dawn, I'm so proud of you because we connected about four years ago, I recall, um, on Facebook. And I am so proud of you for stepping into your power and letting go of those self-limiting beliefs and writing your book. So I have first question that I want to ask you is what inspired you to write this book and share your personal journey with the world? First, I want to thank you for having me and it's been a pleasure knowing you. Yes, it's amazing what Facebook can do and how we connected and how we were roommates last year at our Activate convention. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to get to hug you. Um, gosh, so what inspired me to write the book? Is that what you asked, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I always knew I would write a book, but it wasn't until I was around the right people that it finally happened. And um, so I talk about that in the book of how I came to write it. Um, it was like once I spoke it out loud, on the leadership mastermind call when I was inspired and I said, well, I'm going to write my book. And then I kept getting other Holy spirit downloads beyond that. That was, mm -hmm. that were further confirmation and um, led me to the right people to make it happen. Wow. That's great. Yeah. And I can tell you something, <clears throat> excuse me for the cough. You held nothing back when you wrote your book. There was stuff in there, you know, like with your family, with your father, the relationships that I didn't even know, but you held nothing back. You held absolutely nothing back. 
So let me ask you this. Can you share a pivotal moment from your journey that significant that significantly shaped your path to resilience and empowerment. So in other words, that pivoting moment when you decided to break the silence about the relationship with your father, your mother, and then the, the estrangement with your son, what was that pivoting moment? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've always felt that I was naturally, I used to be an oversharer in general. Right. So I want to start there, like to where I never had a problem sharing um, things. So writing the book was natural for me in regards to that. But of course, being mindful of others as well as the book is written. Right. So and I think, you know, definitely accomplished that. Um, But. um as far as a, a pivotal moment, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like I said, it was, it always was going to naturally flow out of me, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, I think back, I often think daily, every day of, of my mentor, Molly Trotter Gomez, our story is meant to be mentorship. There you go. There you go. So, knowing you know i don't know i think for me once once i found jesus everything changed and once i was in the right community and in in the right environment um you know really once i was introduced to sue sunstrom and in her coaching program you know i'm i'm the type of person when i start something i see it through um when i started college I went for the program and saw it straight through. A lot of people change, you know, their um, majors and, you know, go in different directions. And not to mm-hmm. say, you know, that I haven't done that in some things, but when I started the book, you know, it was, yes, it took, it took two years. That's the most common question I get is how long did it take? It took two years because some of the things hadn't happened yet, but I think, um, okay. you know, I, I don't know if I answered your question as far as a pivotal moment of, but, um, yeah, I just, you know, like I said, I, I never had a problem sharing and I knew, I knew in my heart that the personal things that were important to me to share. And, you know, when I share at the beginning, the, the details about my childhood, those were important because that came into play later on when, when I got married and didn't take my children's feelings into consideration. And I was taking myself back to how my mom did that, you know? Okay. Yeah. So that, you know, I don't know. (laughs) No, 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 that, no. I mean, so it took two years then to write your book. It did. Yeah. Because yeah, what was holding you back or was it just something no. that was not a priority? No, it was the exact opposite of all. It wasn't holding me back and it wasn't that it wasn't a priority. It was the Lord had placed on my heart when, so I talk about the journey to my new home and how, mm. what a surprise. I mean, hello, <laughs> you know, and I didn't clarify in the book how, as my husband was retiring, The Lord said to me, you're moving. And he was thinking, well, what? You know, our condo's paid off. I'm not going to have to do anything. And I'm like, we're moving. And so we moved to this amazing home that every single day still was a year in March. And every day I'm still like in complete awe of what the Lord has done to place us in this home. And once we got into the home, that's when the Lord had me focus more on nurturing my relationship with my husband and tending to a yard and having a garden and, you know, having the bonfires and um, finding the home was a, a, a pivotal moment and a, and a huge step mm-hmm. in, in my growth journey with God. And then being led to Life Point Church. So, over it's been one year last week that I found the church and 
So the things that happened there needed to be in the book, but they hadn't, the, these things hadn't happened yet. And that is why, you know, I was still working on the book, but, but I knew there was more and I knew the home and the church were going to be part of it. And so it's very, these things are very recent in there because the book was just published on July 8th, which yes. was my grandma's 105th birthday. And she's been gone for gosh, like 27 years now or something. And so, it, so there's been a lot of divine timing mm. throughout this entire process, but yeah, that's the number one question. People say, how long did it take? And what made you write a book? <laughs> <laughs> That's common. That's yeah. common. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And you're building your legacy. Yeah. You are certainly building, you know, your legacy. And um, so God led you to this. Oh, yes. It's, you know, you know, I didn't know Jesus and, until 2013. And even then, not to the, not until 2022, did I really step into a true relationship um, with Jesus. And because I didn't know, you know, and that's what I talk about. It's, it's why it's my journey to faith and fulfillment. And, right. and funny story too, how the name of the book and even the one woman's journey to faith and fulfillment, none of that was part of the original Book, oh. like or the thought process if you will um, okay my cousin dave in his creative genius as i quote in the beginning he's the one thought of the name but i was just thinking last night when i met my husband we started dating july of um 96 and i was called new dawn because his sister is dawn <laughs> I just thought of that last night. I didn't even wow. get to say it. Wow. It's like, a new, a I was going to ask you what, like, how did you come up with the title? Dave. I love, yeah. and I love this. Now, yeah, is, this you? Dave. is this yeah. you right here? It is not. And there's a story there too. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. Share that story yeah. with us, please. Yeah. So, it looked um, like you. I said, is that Dawn? Is that really Dawn there? <laughs> exactly. And actually my coworker, Katie, um, she said the design and she spoke it out loud and um yeah i just could not even have asked for more but um yeah it just it 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 was a process and so it evolved you know like i said see initially i was going to write and just and tell my story mm. and i i mean i was early on real early on in in that journey to faith and fulfillment so then the book took me the book was written through that journey. You know, mm -hmm. of course I'm still learning and growing and mentoring the youth at Life Point Church. Oh, wow, is that a amazing um, you know, I'm learning so much. But That's it's also great. like I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, and it, but it's also like taking me back to my childhood as if now to see not I don't want to say well, it is what I missed out on when I was that age, but it, I'm, I'm learning as much as the students, no doubt. Okay. No doubt. Okay. So the Lord placed me there for a reason. Um, that's yeah, good. That's good. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> you know what it is? God has plans for us that we couldn't even imagine. Yeah. So, you know, Life Point Church has changed your life. Yeah. And this book I know is making an impact on my life because I can tell you something. A lot of people are afraid to break the silence. They feel ashamed. Right. Yeah. They feel ashamed, you know, starting over. And I remember when we were working together, you, I remember, I recall that you had said that, you know, you were struggling with estrangement with your son and also those self-limiting beliefs that were holding you back. So what was that pivotal moment when you, you know, you sit down one day, you surrender and you wrote it in your book. And like I said, you held nothing back when yeah. you wrote your story about your son. Really so having the, the really giving, you know, like I said, my cousin used to say, let go and let God. And I'm like, you know, of course that was completely foreign to me. And wow. until you know what that means, you just, you just don't know. Cause if you, if there's no God, there's no peace. But when you know God, you know peace. 
you know, you and I, lo- I love that. Yeah, I, love I mean, that. absolutely. And so that was the pivotal moment for me. I remember the moment being on the phone crying to my cousin when my son had another relapse. And and as she was crying, I felt Jesus yeah. and I had this peace that surpasses understanding. And, you know, I, I think the Lord equipped me almost my whole life for this for this time and for my boys to not be in my life you know and i keep praying you know if if it's god's will that they will come back into my life but i'm not i i'm not you know not stopping living my life in the meantime you know but i definitely hold that space for reconciliation and you know love and miss them and pray for them but it's just not you know, the time right now is they're just not to be in my life right now. It's, you know, it's okay. just not part of the God's plan. So not part of know. God's plan. It's just not. So now let me ask you this. Have parents approached you, the people who have written, who have read your book so far, because you can help a lot of parents. I was just thinking, because if they have a strange relationship, has, has anyone approached you? Yeah. So specifically, there's one amazing lady at church. And uh, so, as I mentioned, one of the um, groups I'm involved with is the ladies breakfast. And it's just so amazing. You know, last night was my cooking class and there's, there's just nothing like community and we're not meant to do life alone. So we're at Mm. the women's breakfast. Of course, I bring my book and and everyone gets a free bracelet too. I'll have to get one of the bracelets in your hands. And so this one lady, she was so excited about my book and it really is inspiring her because she wants to write a book, but didn't know, she didn't know who to go to, you know? And I think a lot of times you just don't, you don't, if you don't know the right people and she was telling everyone, she's even, the waitress is trying to take her order and they're busy. And she's like, but look, she wrote a book and I'm thinking the waitress is like, that's nice. And um, so we got to talking. It's so funny. Um, on Sunday, I was waiting for a new friend um, that the Holy Spirit sent to me. I was, she was supposed to arrive and I had already been through the first two services. Well, I'm with, I did the first service Sunday, we run three. Then I was with the youth group and then I knew I was going to stay for all three services, but the new friend I was waiting for had not arrived yet. So I was outside trying to leave, if you will talking to the lady, my friend from the women's breakfast, who was so excited about my book. And she of course had read it. And so she was telling me, this has helped me so much because my daughter is estranged. And um, so we, we were talking about that. And then I got the tap on the shoulder, you know, that my friend had arrived and was looking for me. Oh, good. <laughs> so good. Took good. her in for the service and the book is, my book is truly helping her. Um, yes, I'm getting a lot of wonderful feedback on uh, many different aspects of the book, um, you know, from being mm. fatherless to um, the addiction um, to estrangement. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, most people, I think in general, tend just naturally. It's how we're raised. We focus on the problem, uh. you know, and we know what we focus on grows. So, I know that's why I'm truly living in perfect peace now, because I don't focus on the problem. I don't ask, why is this happening to me? I look for what is the outcome here? You know, I know something good is going to come out of what can look awful at the moment. And it's really just been, you know, a game changer. Okay. You know, I think my sister always says, um, you know, about my positivity and, one year I knew she was coming for Thanksgiving and she's like, all your positivity in the world isn't going to make this happen. And I thought you're coming. And the next week she calls, guess what? We're coming for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, yeah, I already knew that. Good. You know? but, That's good. That's yeah, good. I mean, it's just, there is such power in it, but I am seeing daily how the Holy spirit is specifically sending people to me in my path. And, um, you know, and then, and I know when, when to bless the book and gift it, you know, there are certain people who cannot afford it, who I am meant to gift it to. And I love doing that. It just, I just love it so much. Well, it's so rewarding 
because yeah. when you gift and oh. you put out good to when you give and put that out to the universe and God, it comes back. Yeah, it truly does. It comes back tenfold. Yeah. So I love the fact that you brought off, do not focus on the problem. That's right. Focus on the, on the solution. Yes. 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 It's a game changer. I mean, I challenge everyone, you know, don't say, why is this happening to me? Mm. The, the, you know, and I also wrote down before we got on the call about being refined in the fire. I mean, it's, it's, we have, you know, everyone, Jim Rohn always says, um, don't wish for less problems, you know, wish, wish for more solutions. And, you know, it, and it is through the fire that we are refined, you know, and I agree. You no, know, it's just, yeah. Yeah. And I always ask what, not why. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's been the community. It's been the people, um, Girl Power Alliance, which is now Kingdom Alliance. Uh, absolutely. The reason my book is published you know, I'm so mm. grateful. Michelle Schaefer is amazing. And she wrote the foreword in my book and Natalie, Brandy and Kelly all wrote endorsements and I That's met great. them all, you know, in this amazing growth journey. So I'm just so grateful. Well, I'm very, very grateful. And I'm glad that they were there for, what did it feel like when Michelle Schaefer wrote the foreword of the book? Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Well, it's funny. We, you know, every Monday morning we have a free prayer call. It's free to anybody. You do not have to be part of our community. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wouldn't miss it. You know, I've maybe only missed one in th these, has it been three years now, two and a half years? How and I've been time just flies. Too. I lose track of time. I'm not one real good with dates and because the time, the years just fly. Um, but we were on a prayer call one morning and, and I had just, I spoke out loud and I just said, you know, um, will you, you know, will you write the for, will you write the forward in my book? And of course she said, yes. And, um, it's, it's just, I mean, of course I cried when I received it back from her and, um, it's just what an honor, you mm. know, just such an honor. Yeah. And she didn't that is an honor. say yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That is an honor. Absolutely. Oh, oh, can't wait to be with, with everyone in October. It's coming up quick. That's I know. Yeah. It's September 1st next next Sunday, so it's time is going by very quickly. Yes. Yeah. And it's important to have a voice and now you are the voice for couples, for women. You are the voice for women and men too. Yes, it's not just for women, guys. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny Well, I gifted it to a young man yesterday and um and he's starting a job for me tomorrow. And he is, he was funny because he, he ran out of my office to take a bus to go to an interview. And, and then he's texting, I'm already on chapter two. This is so good. And um, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just I read really like 50 funny. pages the first day. It, <laughs> I couldn't put the book down. <laughs> I could not put the book down. Yeah. Amazing. So let me ask you um, about faith. Now, how... So can you share a moment where faith played a crucial role in your decision making or outlook on life? And what oh, and what advice would you give to someone struggling to reconcile their faith with their personal challenges? In this case, estrangement. Yeah. Well, faith is everything to me and even even before I was a Christian and even, even before I truly knew Jesus, I still, you know, I, it's not that I wasn't a believer, but I didn't know what it meant to, to be, to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. Um, so I'd like to say I always had faith, if that makes sense, but I didn't not, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. I guess there's right. There's no way to explain it. Um, right. So when I was first estranged from my son, I didn't know Jesus and I was devastated and I was crying and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, you feel like a loser. You feel like a failure. You know, you love your children with all your heart. How could your child stop talking to you? And, um, and then, you know, again, it was through the Holy Spirit aligning me with people, um, the right people. And, um, it, it one, 
I'm trying to think of a pivotal moment with it truly um, because I had the estrangement with my son and an addiction with my other son kind of kind of simultaneously happening. So okay. which both of those things drew me closer to God, which then gave me the peace that surpasses understanding, like and, and truly living in perfect peace. And there's nothing more glorious, absolutely glorious. So, um, I mean, I encourage anyone. I, I think, I think of it this way, where if you look back over our lives, people come and go in our lives all the time, but we don't, ex we, we, we don't think that, that that should or can include our children okay. or family, right? Like I have a heart, I would not disown somebody. So it's hard to understand how your own child and now both of my boys don't talk to me. And I think a lot of people, they curl up in a, you know, in a ball. Like I, I was going to work just getting through the day and then coming home and crying. I was there. Um, but it, it, you know, and, and part of it too was when I met my friend D which I talk about in the book. And there was a natural product that helped me through that as well, which I still love, which it does help me, but more than cool. anything is, is my relationship with Jesus. Um, and, and just never letting anything steal your joy is, is number one and not suffering alone in silence. Number two, and um, to keep, to, to not stop living your life. You know, I think people think, you know, how, how can I go out and be happy? You know, or they're embarrassed. People say, you know, how's, you know, oh, how's Johnny doing? You know, how's Susie? You know, and they're, you know, or they're, it's hard not to be envious. You're seeing other people with their grandchildren, but you don't get to see yours, you know? Mm. So, yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I think it's just, just knowing your worth in Christ and knowing, you know, this is not our permanent home. You know, we know we're going to be in heaven and, you know, and if you don't know that, I encourage you to, to, to get there, <laughs> you know, reach okay, out, good. you know, good. because, you know, I mean, I'm just going to say my sister needs prayers. My sister is dying and she has no faith and, oh, and, it, wow. and it's, and it's sad. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think keeping your sister faith in my prayers. And, and truly and truly drawing near to God and um, and having that relationship and knowing that heaven is for real. Here's one other last thing I want to say is it's funny because I quoted heaven is for real, the movie in my book, and I had mm -hmm. not yet seen it. And it was like Holy Spirit had me do that, like. Now I've seen it since then, but I'm like, wait a minute. I quoted that movie, but I haven't seen that movie. And that's not me. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't like recommend a book or recommend a movie that I haven't seen, but I've seen it now twice and probably right. going to watch it a third time. But um, yeah, it, heaven is for real. And heaven is for that's real. My, wow. That's my, you know, that's my Jesus spiel. <laughs> Oh, that's your Jesus feel. Okay. Well, that's oh my God. But, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you think about it, there's a new song out too called Dash, you know, and there's a, the year we're born and the year we die. And in between is just that dash, you know, what on earth are you doing? What are we doing with that dash? Mm -hmm. This time here is just a blip, you know, we are only here for a very short time. I think people, they put, you know, too much, uh, you know, too much thought on, you know, what are other people thinking, you know, mm. you know, and, and, and just, you know, just, it, it's just so important. Be kind, you know, and that's, that's what I love about being around Christians. And you certainly know when someone isn't, you know, because when you are genuinely kind and care for others and through the youth group, even, and Girl Power Alliance, that's where I've truly learned to have the mind of Christ. That has been the game changer. If you ask me the one thing, having the mind of Christ. 
Okay. Truly. truly. Yeah. And, and dig into that. Yeah. Dig into that piece. Yeah. Okay. And to Jesus. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. It's just. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. so glad my eyes were opened and the veil was lifted, you know. My cousins worked on me for a while. And I'm like, what do you, you know, they're like, we want you to know Jesus. And like, we're in the pool and they're like, we want you to know Jesus. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, oh, had no yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> but, and when know. did you come to know Jesus? Yeah. Well, well, true. Like I said, I, through, through, through my troubles, through, you know, when okay. I was at my lowest, and thankfully for my cousin Maria, you know, my cousin Maria. Um, and then when Holy Spirit spoke to me about Girl Power Alliance, I had the download of what it was before it was a month oh. before it was brought to the world. So I get glimpses. I hear from the Holy Spirit. Um, I talk about several Holy Spirit moments in my book. Um buying my car instead of leasing it, buying this home and um, just being obedient and, and, and listening, you know, when the Holy Spirit speaks, I have that chapter in there. And I actually, I mean, there was, there was a lot more moments. There was one I really wanted to share, but it was kind of too long. So, you know, you have to kind of pick and choose. There was a couple chapters I had that I took out, you know, it was a uh, process. So Sure. It's a process. <laughs> It's not easy. No. It's and, not and, easy. You know, and like I said, you held nothing back. Yeah. Yeah. The, God naturally equipped me that way to, um, to, to not be afraid to share. I'm not embarrassed. You know, you know, right. I, I know the mistakes I made. There's no shame. You know, I, I, I didn't have a clue when I was raising my boys. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. You know, I didn't have a clue. You know, you think okay. I would have been smarter than that, but I wasn't. And, you know, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Absolutely. And it is okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So about now, what I want to talk about is this, what is the most important lesson that you hope readers take away from your book? Finding beauty in your struggles mm. and, um, yeah. And looking for the blessings instead of looking at the problem. Okay. Yeah. Cause you talk a lot about that, yeah. right? Look for the blessing. Yes. Look for the blessing. Don't look, don't, don't focus on the problem. What we focus on grows. So I agree, I, you know, you, you have, you, you've got to look beyond the problem and you know, and, and, and truly, and to know that there something good will come of this. It's, it's going to grow you, you know, um, you know, I also want people to know too, the more uncomfortable you are to do something is further confirmation that you need to do it. Ah. If you're scared to do it, that means you're going to, you need to grow through it. So exactly. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. I really exactly. encourage, you know, the relationship with Christ, um, you know, find, I mean, my gosh, find a church like Life Point Church in Mentor here. It is unbelievable. There is nothing like it. And it's because we have such amazing life groups. Um, you know, we're building one life at a time. We're building for eternity. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it, and Holy Spirit led me there. Gary who led me there. Um, he came in on Sunday. I said, your name is in my book. And he says, and he come right over and he gave me $20 for, and they're only $10 in person. And he's like, here, gift it to someone else. So he gave me $20 and he says, I can't oh, wait to read it. Guys. Yeah. That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. I'm glad that you found a church and I actually yeah. found one too. It's yeah. right next door to where I live. Good. Yeah. 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 So I yeah, go I was like, praying. That was, what's that? I go once to twice a month, nice. so very welcoming, and I feel very grateful that I found my church too. Yeah. Oh, I could be at Life Point all the time. I'm there on Wednesday nights from like five thirty till nine with wow. the youth group, and then on Sundays I'm there for a personal service, and then I'm with the youth group during the ten o'clock service, and um, you know then I have the 
my groups that I'm in. And this is the other thing people always say, you know, how do you find time to do all this? And plus I work full time, but right. if it's important for you, you make the time. And uh, if someone says they're too busy and if someone is too busy for you, that means you're not a priority. That's just the God's honest truth, you know? Wow. And I think another thing too, I want people to realize as, as I mentioned with, you know, how my kids aren't in my life, God is going to bring people in and out of your lives. You know, you hear that, right? Some people come in our life for a season. Some people come for a reason, you know, um, and if someone's not making time for you and you're not a priority for them, you know, don't focus on them, focus on other, you know, who God is going to bring into your life, you know, because the, the people that are in my life right now are newer friends that I've met at life point, but they, they're, you know, generally genuine brothers and sisters in Christ that I absolutely cannot imagine my life without them, you know? Oh, so, that's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That okay. connection is so important. You know, yeah. it's not that we just go to church on a Sunday that you're involved. That's right. That's, th th I think that's a mm. lot of people do live that way. Um, but it, I mean, I'm with Jesus all day, every day. I mean, he's sitting right here with us, right? So all day, every day. And that is the game changer. And that takes a while to get there. And not everybody is quite at that level, but I encourage it because that's where true freedom is found. Yeah. I agree. True freedom and abundance. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, in the morning, no matter what's happening, I connect to God and the Lord in the morning for one hour. As people say, how do you do that? I just get up at 530. Yeah. Between five and five thirty. Yeah. And I and connect the with the Lord. Yeah. I connect. I do my meditation and then I connect. I have my coffee and I'm just so immersed. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing, too, is when someone comes into your mind, reach out to them. Yeah. Yesterday morning, oh. Holy Spirit said to me there there's I'm not going to name a name, but there there's someone very special and um, through life point and um, and, and Holy Spirit said to me, you need to send her a hundred dollars. And wow. you know, just without hesitation, because I, because I know. And so we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus and listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Truly, um, truly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Total in total agreement. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so yeah. About the book now, what does the future look like for you now that you've shared your story and any new projects or goals on the horizon? Ooh. Well, the, the nice thing is because, well, because we don't know the future, which is fine mm. with me. <laughs> Just one, That's one true. step at That's a time. True. One, one step, step at a time. Yes. And I agree with you. I yes. agree with you. Um, I do feel I will write a children's book, although that, mm. do you know, that children's book, um, love you forever. Yes. I've heard of it. Right. So it, something on that, I can't even, it'll come to me. It'll be a Holy spirit download something on that premise. And I, it's, it, it's going to be something about grandchildren. Like I can't, I feel like it's going to be something about how it's okay like, I know they're okay, so I'm okay. But I can't, the thing that doesn't connect in my mind is how would it be a children's book when, like, people, like, my grandchildren wouldn't be reading the book because, right, who's going to share mm. a book with, I can't explain it. But anyway, possible <laughs> children's book, who knows? And, you know, that I'm going to keep, awesome. <laughs> what's that? That would be awesome. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know another book or not, but um, I'm definitely going to keep listening to my dreams. Um, our dreams are very important. It is hard to document and remember them, mm. though, but that God does speak to us through our dreams, um, literally while we're sleeping. So exactly. if, if we can remember or talk into a voice recorder or whatnot to get messages from there, um, I'm just going to keep listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, 
my my thought with the whole book was if it helped one person, then I reached my goal. So I think I've already done that. And um, yeah, I'm just going to keep keep sharing and keep spreading the light Good. of the Lord. There you go. Keep sharing. And I agree. Keep sharing and keep sharing your light with the Lord, especially in the world that we live in today. Yeah. 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 There's, There's just so much going people. on. So much right. sadness and poverty and, you know, mm. people are focusing on the wrong things, you know, I because agree. you just don't know, you don't know any better. So I think it's important to get around, you know, recognize when the Holy Spirit places godly people in your lives and get around those people, you know, and get involved and exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to be miserable and, um, you know, focusing on the problems. <laughs> Anybody exactly. can focus on the problems all day long and then you're going to have more problems. <laughs> right, because what you focus on expands. Oh, sure so when does. you focus on the problem, the problem is going to multiply. It does. But if you're focusing on the solutions, then the solutions start yeah. to come in. And it takes time trusting yeah. the process. It does. Trust yeah. God and trust the process. That's what I've done yes. in, my, um, in my journey. So, and if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? I would have, I would have liked to had Jesus in my life when I was younger. Okay. Um, but you know, as I said, when my cousins moved to California, they took their good and godly ways with them. And then it was nearly 40 years later. Um, you know, I think that's a tough one because, you know, I almost wouldn't change anything because the things I went through made me who I am. So, you know, I, I would have liked to have the parent handbook um, or, you know, had godly influence around the way I raised my children, for sure. Um because I absolutely had no clue and, you know, but it just, you know, I just, I just didn't. So. Okay. Okay. All right. And actually what I wanted to ask you was how, how can individuals, especially women cultivate a sense of empowerment in their daily lives? Hmm. Well, start your day with Jesus for sure. And okay. um, just just don't focus on your flaws again or, you know, people, anybody could focus on, you know, they don't like how they, they look or um, things like that. I think that's a big thing is self-esteem, I think is a huge thing. Um, taking on um, other people's opinions, you know, that's really important. Don't play the comparison game. I think you definitely empower yourself by being your best self. So there you go. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and okay. again, surround yourself, surround yourself with the right people. So that's, exactly. that's, that is key. Yeah. That is people who are on a higher level than you. Yes. I mean, you'll be, you know, the mentors in my life, I think that's the other thing people, you know, may get intimidated by, by people who have more, no more, or whatever. Those are the people they are willing and, and willing and wanting to share their successes, you know, and not, they don't gloat about it. They don't act, they, they don't think they're better than, you know, and again, if you're afraid to reach out or be around those people, it's further confirmation you need to be. <laughs> so That's right. You got to be around those people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You got to be mean, around those yeah. people. Those people are going to elevate your life yeah. and take your life to the next level. Right. Whether they're a step ahead or 10 steps ahead. You know, and you may only be one step ahead of someone else, but you're still, you know, able to lead them, you know. You right. Know, and grow and I can tell you, yeah, and I can tell you this. I've surrounded myself with um, some, you know, new mentors and leaders 
they believe in you like they believe in me. And I know in the past, I was the biggest victim of comparitis, meaning that I would compare myself to other leaders. And that held me back for a long, long, long time. Yeah. And comparison is the thief of joy. It is truly is. Yeah. 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 It is. You know, so I just turned 56 and I, it, you know, and I'm proud of it. And so many people like, I help people with their documents every day. It's just easier when I work in an employment agency for 27 years and it's just easier to help them go through the documents because I could do it in under 10 minutes, what would take them 30. But, you know, you get to the age thing and every single person, you know, oh gosh, I wish, you know, I wish I was 20, you know, it's like, they're missing the whole point, (laughs) you know? Okay. Okay. Got it. You know, They're missing the point. Exactly. Growing old is a privilege. You know, Mm -hmm. yes, we don't want, you know, the, the, the wrinkles and all the fun things that happen, but we're still, yes, we may look a little, we may look older on the outside, but we still, you know, feel the same, you know, you'll hear someone who's a hundred years old and they, they, they still have that, you know, God willing, right. Have that same beautiful mind. And, um, yeah. You know, I think people get too caught up on, you know, outward appearances and or comparison, you know, comparing themselves to others and, you know, wanting what other people have, you know, it's, you know, that'll just tear you down. So to that'll empower just tear yourself. You down. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. And you have to exactly. know too, and, and sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow that where you're at today is a, is based on the choices that you've made. And if you don't like where you're at, then make better choices. There you go. There you go. Right. Absolutely. Get around around people who are where you want to be. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So where can people contact you? Yeah. So I I have uh, dawnhowell.blogspot.com. I have all my links on there. So, cause you know, I'm on Facebook and, um, on LinkedIn and, um, Instagram and such, but dawnhowell.blogspot.com. And then I have, um, my book is on there. The link to my book, it's a new dawn. It's on Amazon. Um, it's in the Kindle version as well, but I tell you, there's nothing like holding. I like to hold and read a book. And then I have the journal page and the journal and self-reflection at the end of each I chapter. love that. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's really special to, to be able, you know, to take the readers through their journey, um, and to really embrace that, that those journal pages, you know, and exactly. Reflect, I love know. the journal pages. Yeah. Yeah. in yeah, so. the book. And also you have a prayer at the end of each chapter yeah. and you have a self-reflection. Yeah. So See? important. Yeah. That is so, so important. So, okay. So one final, before I let you go, what is a special message that you would like to share to the viewers and to the listeners who will be listening to our podcast episode tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern? Oh, gosh, I'm telling you, just, you know, don't hold back from living your best life and don't live the someday life. You know, so many people, someday I'm going to take the trip. Someday, you know, someday is not going to come. So, you know, life is too short to waste a single moment. I do, you know, have suggestions in my book for hobbies and um, uh, things that you can do to fulfill your life. And, you know, I encourage you to surround yourself. We're not meant to do life alone. So surround yourself in a community. Um, even my cooking class, we have a fun group, the Hungry for Faith group. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I see that Hungry for Faith cooking class happening all around the world. So, um, oh, I like know, that. I want to share with people what we're doing. You know, what you can do. So, just you know, get involved. You know, whether it, you know, like I said, if you have a church like Life Point Church, get involved with something like that. Life changing life changing okay. and be the light, be the light for others, encourage, 
you know, encourage others because people need hope. They need encouragement. And, um, you know, they know, you know, they, I think too many people are suffering right now, you know, and I you know, agree. And it's truly know Jesus. Out of that. Yeah. yeah. Right. When you truly know Jesus, you, you will have peace, a peace that surpasses understanding and it will transform your life. I am a testament That's amazing. to that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. So, well, Dawn, we're already coming up to the top of the hour. Oh my gosh. So thank you so much for your wisdom, your encouragement, your, your support and sharing the journey of your sharing your journey and your book. It's a new dawn and the, um, everything will be posted in the show notes. So you can follow let's break the silence with Angeline. So there is power in your voice. You yes. have a voice. So it's important to share your story and not feel ashamed because sharing your story is going to open up the world of freedom and abundance. So like, and subscribe to my podcast, please on Spotify, Apple, Google, and all the other live streams that you listen to. You can also um, find let's break the Suns with Angeline on YouTube. Just type it in the search bar. And also I am on TikTok. and tomorrow night we are going to be launching our let's break the silence virtual live event in my Facebook group which starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So it's not too late to register. The event link will be posted in the show notes as well. So taking, you know, taking you through that journey and, um, you know, I'm going to be sharing my signature nine step process from feeling lost and overwhelmed to gaining clarity and finding Jesus and stepping into my own power and truth. You are going to learn the two, it's the live event is for two days. So we're going to focus on self-love, self-reflection. There's going to be, you know, we're, it's going to be a live interactive zoom. So please send me a message if you would like to, because we have a lot of ladies who are registered for tomorrow night. Okay. So, I want to end the live right here now. So I want to thank Dawn. Thank you so much. Keep being the light thank for you. others. You too. Keep being the light I for will. others. So just hang out with me in the green room for a few minutes. I wish you all an amazing day and stay tuned. Bye everyone. Stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> Bye everyone.